So people really want to know how to get out of here. This whole room, okay, Yaldabaoth's realm, is hacked all the way to the 12th dimension. So if you look at the ancient Egyptians, I'm talking about before um, Anubis um, has the Pharaoh's face, when Anubis was the protector and the guardian of the dead, back before Egypt was also completely hacked um, and made part of the cataclysm grid called the Phoenix grid. But there was an ancient Egypt. And if you look at how the Hathor group would take a little bit of poison with someone standing by with the antidote and they would learn about how to go through the gates of death. So they knew that every level of this simulation was hacked. So yes, the void is there. It's a hack. Heaven or Nirvana is there. It's also a hack. The machine elves and the life review are definitely a hack. All different levels, like if you read the Yoga Sutras, they said there are many worlds. Don't be distracted by any of those worlds. There'll be places with crystal palaces. You think you've arrived in some other galactic civilization. Yes, that's also hacked. So <clears throat> part of leaving Central Jail is how you live your life here. And uh, Neem Karoli Baba, who is a, a Baba from India who has left Central Jail, had a very interesting way of explaining that this, even in the ashram, even in his domestic life, which he left, even as like the chief or like tribal leader of his people, which he left, everything that you're attached to in this realm will hold a thread on you in what I call the other world. So Neem Karoli Baba made it very clear that this was central jail and he was being held against his will. And when he decided to leave, he actually said that day, I'm leaving central jail now. Now during his life, he was not attached to his role as guru. He was not attached to his role with any of the ma's and the beautiful feminine yoginis who were around him. He loved them, but he was not attached to them. So one of the things that I know is anything that you're attached to in this realm will be a thread back into the trap, into the reincarnation Russian roulette. <clears throat> and I've also watched some other videos of pre-birth experiences and also near-death experiences. And in each of those, they, they don't realize that they're already in the matrix and they're being pushed to make a deal with the machine elves, which they don't know are machine elves. But in this realm, are you praying? And I wrote about that in my blogs. My blogs are all gone. Okay. Are you making deals? When somebody hacks your website, do you pray? Do you ask for assistance? The moment that you do that, you have created the trauma bond with the oppressor. So the number one thing is whatever you're doing here to give away your power and your sovereignty, that will be used against you through the 12 different dimensions, which are the gates, all of which are hacked in the other worlds, okay? And you might arrive at one of those and think, like I said, you made it to the void. Here's what to know about the void. There's nothing in the void. There are no orbs, there's no sound, there is no celestial singing even. If you're in the real void, there's nothing there. Okay, so if you're in a hacked realm, there'll be something there that is luring you in. Okay, even when you're in the void, you don't feel necessarily the ecstasy until you come back into the body. So the other way to know that you're not in the void is if you're in this like ecstasy. 
because when I used to visit Amrita Nanda Mai Ma, you know, she would, she knew who I was, obviously, and she would ask me to come up on the stage and like slap me in the head and I would go into a state of ecstasy. You're not looking for that either, okay? That's the spiritual cocaine or the love bomb that people get um, in the near-death experience where they're like, oh my gosh, you never felt such love before. In the void, you will not feel that. And there will be nothing and nobody there. That's why if you do the dismemberment journey with me, which is basically a death meditation, you're taking responsibility of letting your body go and going instantly to the void without a guide. You're not going to meet ancestors. There's nobody who's going to receive you. You have to have your full sovereignty and not be tricked. So let's look at some other things that the Egyptians did. So yes, the Hathor group would die and they'd go to a different level and another level and another, they called it the gates, okay? Another level and they'd figure out what was the trickery at that level and then someone would give them the antidote and they would come back. They had reached that level and then they would explain like, this is how we get out of here. We have, you know, you might be confronted with a fake Nirvana, a fake void, a fake crystal palace, like beautiful heaven, and you think you're in a new galactic civilization. All of that is part of it. And I've explained in my blogs again and again, all 12 dimensions here are copies of other realms that are true realms. And they're copied here because you'll have that sense of, oh, familiarity, and this is where I belong. It's only through your own sheer will, without any attachments, without striking any deals, to know to get, not get sucked into any of those wormholes to those different gates or those different simulated realities in the 12th dimensional structure that is here. If you look at somebody like um, Bob Marley, who I, I really adore Bob Marley, um, his perpetrator, who who apparently was working from some, some agency, admitted on his deathbed that he had given a sneaker, a set of sneakers, that put some substance into Bob Marley's toe. You can look this up yourself. Bob Marley, you know, is criticized. If anything that you look at, he's criticized for not taking action against his cancer. Like, there's endless blogs saying, oh, he could have solved it, he could have fixed it, it was easy, they could have just cut his toe off, like all that stuff. Bob Marley knew he was not of this realm, and that's why he read, he uh, sang Exodus and people, my people, leave Babylon. The other thing about Bob Marley, if you study him, not only did he willingly give up his body, he left no contracts behind. This is tricky, okay? There's no contracts. Uh, he didn't leave a will. His estate, which must have been quite large, was not like left to anyone in particular. Whereas, if you look at Dolores Cannon, her estate is still receiving money from her YouTube videos that are still being shared because, as I said, she's one of the perpetrators who recruit pure souls here. So she's continually receiving the funds from Babylon, this realm, you see? Look at the two of them, Bob Marley, so willing to leave, singing all the songs about, Ja people, people, let's leave this realm, let's leave Babylon. Whereas we got Dolores Cannon going, oh, come on, more people, more pure souls, come and fix this. We got to fix Earth and all this stuff. And then she writes very clearly that we get reincarnated here because we failed to evolve. You can't evolve here, people. Because just like in the video I did with Kisena, anybody that you still have the soul parts of, that you have had a trauma with, that you are bonded to in some way, you need to forgive, release, delete that memory, let it go. 
So I'm being very severe and people might be like, oh my gosh, Lolita, what are you talking about? Like everything, any religious text that has your name in it, you can, whatever with the religious text, but rip the page out with your name and put it into the wood stove. So like Bob Marley, don't let anything in this realm keep you in a contract. In the pre-birth experience that someone shared um, on my Facebook page, I noticed that the guy was already in the matrix. I mean, he was in what he thought was heaven, which is within the 12th dimensional st structure of the simulation. He, um, was, he was resisting going back. He was like, oh my gosh, these three beings and cloaks came for me. And I didn't want to go back. I kept telling them, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. And then, of course, they have the best deal for you. And they, they propose a deal. And the deal is, you'll be able to remember this place. We'll let you remember heaven. We'll let you remember this place where the love bomb is of ecstasy. But you got to go back. And so he made the deal. He made the deal within the structure, and he saw himself being like funneled down the wormhole technology, something he said that felt like he was going through water, and then he saw the realm. The realm is not blue and green. If you're above the superstructure, he said it looked like hell. He said he felt the darkness, he felt the evil, it was ghoulish looking, and then he went through the structure, which felt like water, and he was just absolutely going to be sure that he would remember heaven, which was already within the simulation in the Matrix. And he gave an account, very like all the other pre-birth accounts, of these three beings. Um, just like the near-death experience people, it's always these three beings. But I don't know, that could be hijacked too, so it might be four beings now. So, yeah. Anything that I say is going to inform the field of how to hijack it further. So even what I say, you got to be careful. you got to have your own sovereignty and your willpower to get out of here. But when he was coming back down, he saw it for what it really is. This is the river sticks. We're in hell, okay? And he came back in. His life has been very difficult. And he said those machine elves, which he didn't know what they were. They were just these three beings in cloaks, were so full of love. But you see, I want to tell you something. That's your love that they are using. That love bomb, that ecstasy is actually what you are. And this whole matrix is an artificial construct built on the love, the golden hearted purity that you are. And then you're sent down into this realm to be traumatized so they can like score more adrenal response, more trauma, more sadness. And everything here is what animates this matrix, which people call Earth. Even if you go into like the Voyager's material, which now that I have this new frame, I read it again. They even say this is a bridge project. This is an eternal life matrix. This is a matrix. You're in a matrix. Even all the Christic stuff is a matrix. It's a copy it's a simulation. They're just posing as the good guys, okay? But within that document, it very clearly says, and I don't have the page in front of me, I've posted it a bunch of times on Facebook, that the next hack of this matrix, which is called the metaverse, is going to be an eternal death matrix. So that one, you're a hologram, you never get to have a biological human spacesuit, and you can't die. You're already dead. You're in like a holographic, disintegrating thought form, uh, just like Zuckerberg. I can't say it because then, you know, the, the video. Just like the metaverse is explained, that you're a hologram. You never get to die again. So... Maybe some of us came back this time also 
to collect all our soul parts, get rid of all our personal attachments, delete all our memories, um, give back any soul parts that we're still holding on to through whatever trauma that we've had and get out of here because the next one is very clearly explained by both the technologists and <clears throat> the Voyager's material as one that you can't get out of because you won't have a biological spacesuit that you're wearing that allows you to leave. 